welcomed me with the best weather, so uh, pretty good. <laughs> uh, so let's get into it. Uh, we only got one hour, a lot of content to push through. So uh, what's new retail? So uh, I guess you know before I talk uh, what's new retail, and um, I just wanted to share something that's uh, happened very recent, um, just to help put things into context. Um, that's the Double uh, Eleven Shopping Festival uh, that took place globally just a few weeks ago. And uh, it is the, uh, a global shopping festival that runs through Alibaba as uh, ecosystem and marketplace. And it happens on November 11th um, every year. And so this year is quite significant. Um, it marks the 10th anniversary of our Double Eleven shopping festival. Um, as you can see on the screen, there's a this huge number over there. It, it translates to uh, a 213 billion Chinese yuan. Uh, of uh, a GMV. GMV is gross ver uh, uh, merchandise volume. Uh, what that means is within 24 hours, uh, there are two, uh, 300 billion US dollar worth of good that's been sold on our marketplace and across our entire ecosystem. It's absolutely an amazing number. And, and to put that into context, um, everyone's familiar with eBay. You know, I personally sell and buy stuff on eBay as well. A uh, very popular marketplace. Um, eBay has done um, 88 billion dollar US, uh, 88 billion US dollar last year, uh, for the whole year, and we've done almost 40 percent of that within 24 hours. Uh, you know, it's amazing, and uh, it was increased from 25 billion dollar uh, worth of uh, uh, GMV uh, from last year, 2017, and again an increase from 17 billion in 2016. And it, it actually all come from a very humble beginning. This is not an over uh, overnight success. Not about us riding the wave. You know, 10 years ago when we start Double Eleven Shopping Festival uh, 2009, uh, there was only 500, uh, actually 50 merchants that participated in this uh, shopping festival, and we only clocked 8 million, uh, not a billion, 8 million GMV in 2009. So that journey from 8 million to 30 billion is a great, great example of how we transformed our own business. Um, so. Uh, Let's have a look at what else happened uh, over that, you know, on that date, on the 24 hours. Apart from that, there's actually 180,000 brands and merchants and retailers participated in this shopping festival. And many actually come from Australia. Um, so for example, Chemist Warehouse, I'm sure everyone in Australia have seen them. Um, they're everywhere. Um, they uh, they done more than $20 million worth of uh, 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 revenue uh, in less than 10 hours. So it's absolutely amazing. And uh, we have processed one billion orders uh, in that day. Uh, so that's more than what Australia Post processed in the whole year. And we do that in one day. And so behind that amazing number, there's something else that's quite interesting. So last year um, in Double Eleven, 11 um, 80 percent of transaction actually happens um, on mobile. So it's going full mobile these days. And this year, we've done something more interesting. We'll look into the details to say, actually, 60 percent of transaction are processed through a biometric authentication. Uh, so, so things are really moving, uh, moving fast here. Um, so um, just take a snapshot of what happened. Uh, let's look at the, you know, people might think, Jesus, you know, if Alibaba is doing this much big numbers, it must be killing all this brick and mortar business. So it's not. It's actually, uh, I wanted to start a new retail by quote what Jack Ma said. So pure e-commerce, I won't rate it, but uh, pure e-commerce today has, uh, has really plateaued. You know, it's, uh, it's not the future anymore. It's, it's the present and it's the past. Uh, new retail, what is that? It's, it's online, offline logistic and data across a single value chain. So everything is driven by consumer and empowered by technology and data. So that's what's new retail. Um, let's look at some of the common problems these days. And I'm sure if uh, any of the audience that work for a retailer or a retailer themselves, uh, you might have, uh, you can resonate to one or maybe many of these uh, issues. Uh, so number one, is, uh, you know, let's look at the three key elements in retail. That's your consumer, your customer, uh, your product, uh, and also the channel you engage with your customer, right? So if you look at customer, um, many of the retailers today still don't know who their customer are. They know they sell this many stuff at a certain period of time. Christmas is their best selling season. That's probably about it. You don't know much about that. You don't know who their customer are, what's their preference, when they come to which store, uh, what time they like to buy online, and what they buy online. They have very little information. They have some transaction data, but that's about it. So that's a huge gap, not knowing your customer. So you can't be customer-centric and customer-focused if, you know if you don't know your customer. Number two is a, um, a problem with product. Uh, most customers still 
uh, drive their product strategy uh, based on what's popular on the market. It's not a customer-led offering. You know, if you don't know your customer, you sometimes have to sell product at a discount and uh, constantly drive revenue by running promotions, you know, uh, one after another. That's not great. And what happens is that these might attract customers to visit your website. It might attract customers to go into your store if your store is in a good location in the CBD. Um, but there's no transaction. There's very little conversion happening. And the number three is the channel. Right, customer these days, as you can say, 80% of our transaction happens on mobile platforms these days. Um, people you are using biometric authentication, customer wanted to buy the product and engage with you at a channel they preferred, at a time they preferred. If you're still operating on a single channel, which is, you know, whether it's just pure uh, e-commerce or pure in-store, um, it won't work. You know, uh, if I'm, you know, sometimes I browse stuff late night, you know, and uh, that's, that's when I get some quiet times, you know, with our wife and kids, I, I get to look at the stuff I want. And at that time, if I saw something I like, I would like to purchase online, or I would like to uh, sort of, uh, you know, do some click and clack. I want to do, place the order online, I want to click uh, that next day, if it's a Saturday, or on the way back to work. I don't want to wait for delivery. So these has to be enabled. You've you got to have the ability to enable, to engage with your customer at a time, at a channel they prefer. So many retailers still can't do um, any of them or can't do all of them at the moment. So, uh, and this is mostly happening to a retailer that's still mostly operating um, offline. Um, um, and that's true because 80% of retailers today still happen offline. Um, so how do we do that? We look at address these three uh, issues individually and collectively. Uh, with consumer, uh, we try to make them uh, identifiable, reachable, and serviceable. Um, you need to know your customer. Um, so you can um, uh, you know know who they are, their preference, their shopping behavior, so you can reach them and you can service them with um, uh, or you can um, communicate them with, in, a, in, a, in a one on one matter, but at a scale. Uh, second is merchandising. Um, you know overstocking, understocking is a huge problem. Uh, what product your consumer, your customer wants? Now somehow the product you sell also defines your brand as well. Um, so um, by having data about your customer, um, it allows you to drive your product strategy and also allow you to better manage your inventory and at a store level even. Uh, number three is the channel. You know, it, it's, it's not multi-channel, it's a cross-channel these days. Again, I've said that before. It's about engaging with your customer anywhere, anytime. And so new, new retail is all about consumer-centric and data-driven retail that's powered by new technology. And that's what I'm talking about, is big data and AI. So uh, there are opportunities across your entire value chain. You know, with data unification and creating shared services and microservices, you're able to transform your entire retail value chain. And uh, I won't go through number one at a time, but I will pick um, some of the most important one, which is the online to offline, which is the online to offline integration. I'll take some time later to share a case study, uh, which is in-time shopping mall. It's a major shopping mall we uh, acquired and we have transformed them in the last few years, and they now become a fully omnichannel uh, retailer. I'll share that later on. So let's look at the Alibaba Cloud retail solution. Uh, right, this is a typical offline shopping journey that you see on the screen. Uh, it's not a, you know, I wouldn't say this capture every journey, but it's a very typical. Um, there are data you can collect and the services you can provide at every touch point. Um, as you can see, when customers walk into the store, um, this is especially important. If you have a mobile data, uh, mobile commerce strategy, in, uh, in, uh, sort of uh, incorporated in your e-commerce retail strategy, the thing about mobile, what's unique about mobile is that because mobile is really location based. You know, with mobile commerce, it allows you to interact with your customer in real time at the right location. Uh, this is especially important for offline retail because when you walk into a shopping center, um, you know, you need to push the, the, the right message at the right time. That's when mobile commerce come to play. You know, when you visit a shopping center, uh, which retail store do I go? Do I push a coupon? Do I push the relevant message? Um, this is all based on how, how much you know about your customer and also your execution skill, which is, you know, your retail e-commerce strategy, uh, mobile e-commerce strategy. Um, typical, I won't walk through that, but as you can see, customer normally go into a shop, uh, look at the product they want, they try them out, and then they transact. And some of the underlying technology behind that are listed here. You know, we we use a lot of a smart device um, that you know incorporates IoT with a lot of uh, big data and, uh, and AI devices as well um, to enhance uh, this experience. Um, so, for example, in the big data to to manage your stock, um, you can use mobile wallet to boost your loyalty uh, program utilization. 
uh, it just makes things convenient. You know, these days when I go to a supermarket, when I shop, um, sometimes I can't be bothered to take out my uh, digital, uh, what do you call it, loyalty card to scan, just to get a few points because you know it, it's too much work. And if you can integrate facial recognition into a uh, your digital offering, isn't that makes things ha you know a lot easier for customer to redeem uh, their points or to accumulate points? In the same time, you get to uh, capture customers' offline shopping behavior. An IoT device such as uh, I'll take an example, which is an e-price tag. Uh, this has become very popular in China already. That you are allowed to control your pricing strategy, and also you can run very robust promotional program in a single store or across your store nationally in real time uh, with e-price tag. Uh, very important, and uh, you, you can you make yourself more robust. But if you look beyond some of the key, uh, some of the point solutions and some of the smart device we use, let's look at uh, deeper into what's really empowering the retail transformation fundamentally, A is data and capability. Um, so if you look at this, uh, this diagram, there's so much thing here. It's a very busy diagram. Um, but I want you to focus on, uh, let me just click one thing here. Yes, I want you to focus on the business middle platform and the data middle platform. Um, so on the SaaS layer, there are so much uh, offering on the market. You know, it doesn't matter if you're looking to do cross-channel marketing, um, ERP system, loyalty management system, promotional system, warehouse management system, so much offering out there. But I call that an execution channel. What's really going to power the execution channel is how you organize your data and how you connect those servers together. So if you look at the data middle platform and the business middle platform, that essentially echoes to two most important things in new retail. One is being consumer centric. That's being to offer you a better digital consumer experience. Um, that can your channel integration, your customer relationship management, uh, your financial service. Uh, when I say financial service, that's mostly payments. You know, you, you can have micro loan, you can have you know, the pay now, buy now, pay later features all integrated. And also, when it comes to a uh, uh, business middle platform, it's, it's about um, being able to uh, optimize your your day-to-day -day business operation, and that's your supply chain, that's your uh, you know planning, uh, management, and also you know using data to drive some critical business decisions as well. Um, I wanted to use this um, Alibaba's own business as an example. Uh, we actually have 39. A lot of people don't know. Uh, I'm sure uh, the previous webinar might have introduced Alibaba, the whole ecosystem. We actually have 39 business units under Alibaba. The B2B is only one of them. That's where we start from. We have the B2C, B2B platform as our market uh, commerce portfolio. Uh, we have a whole entertainment portfolio, and the likes of YouTube, uh, you know, likes of Twitter in China. We also have the online offline, which seems like you know the the food delivery, as well as uh, you know uh, examples like. Um, uh, like so Uber, which is called Didi, is actually already in Australia, in Melbourne. Um, so, 39 business units, some of them are incubated uh, through our own program, but some are actually acquired from, uh, you know, vertical, industry vertical uh, leaders uh, in, in, in their respective vertical. So, uh, when we acquire all this business and build this, all this business, what, what's going to happen is that we run into a problem where we have the same customer exist in different um, uh, businesses' database. So, you have duplicated the multiple identity that all points to the same person. Then you have the duplicated the same product all points to the same uh, the offering across your platform, but existing different sort of business units again. So in the end, it become a really big problem because we don't know who's doing what. It's very hard to correlate. So the data middle end, uh, which is a platform uh, or a uh, practice where we consolidate all your data, your customer data, your product data, essentially you're creating a single source of choose. A, a virtualized data layer that represents your whole entire business, who your customer are, their, pr their preference, their behavior, their past purchasing history, your product offering, and using that to fill your, uh, uh, your execution layer, which is your SaaS platform you purchase somewhere else. And the business middle platform is also very important as well, because to make things robust, you don't want to recreate the same business. For example, if you, if you have a payment service for one of your business units, you want to use the same payment service underlying payment service for another business unit as well. You don't want to recreate that and duplicate that. The business middle platform is basically a shared uh, uh, services where we have one product strategy, where, uh, sorry, product service, one member service, uh, one promotional service that run across our entire business unit. So it makes things easier for us to renovate uh, to create a new service and launch a new uh, uh, program uh, to the market. 
Um, this is what we call the uh, 360 customer view. That's in the result of uh, being having a single data sort of a, a, a layer. And that's you know uh, being able to know your customer, um, not only their basic attribute, but their shopping behaviors as well, and uh, their shopping preference as well. So this is essentially enable you to be more consumer centric. Um, going through that, that's the Alibaba Cloud Retail Solution. Again, this is echo back to another part, which is the intelligent management and the operation. This enable you to operate more efficiently. Um, I won't go through that, uh, but I want to sort of focus on uh, some of the customer touch points. And these are uh, where typically our customers start from these touch points, because these are the solutions you can integrate straight away to improve your experience. Then some, uh, once you see some result, they normally trickle down and start improving the, uh, the underlying technologies, which are data, which is their shared services. Um, all right, let's move on to that, Alibaba Cloud Retail Solutions. So I have a few solutions, going back to uh, the previous slide, they're listed in the customer touch points. I can unpack them little by little. Um, so number one is the image search. If you look at that, uh, image search, we already have a few customers in Australia already using that, and the result has been pretty good, uh, though iconic. I think anyone in Australia that's buy clothes probably know them. They're a very good vertical uh, uh, apparel uh, e-commerce uh, e player in this market. So they're using image search to help customers to be able to find product similar product on their marketplace quicker. You know, especially with apparel, sometimes it's very hard to describe exactly the style you want. The best way to do that is to take a picture or upload a picture to search for something that's quite similar. And that has been replicated across uh, to a few, hour, uh, few of our, our customers. That include Kill Clothing and the Fish Pond, which is a New Zealand company. They also operate in Australia as well. Um, so the, the beauty of this service is, the, is an API integration. Uh, we have done all the heavy lifting uh, you don't need to have a data scientist to train the model, nothing else. Um, it's all packaged. We have already optimized the model on an ongoing basis uh, based on the product we sell on our platform. So we have more than a billion products on our platform. We use those images and product information to train the engine. So uh, you know, you'll continue getting the benefit of the bigger eco ecosystem we're working on. Another thing is online recommendation. This is quite unique as well. So. Uh, I'll jump to the business outcome. So 50% of revenue uh, increase last year uh, in our platform actually come from the, our product recommendation engine. Uh, there are many on the market at the moment, but the, uh, I guess what's unique about our recommendation engines is, is actually a white box solution. It comes with a set of optimized algorithms already. Um, but however, every retailer is different. You know, doesn't matter what you sell, you have your own strategy, you have your own audience. And sometimes, it, it, you know, it's, it's very unique. Even you're all in the electronic retail space. So being able to recommend the right product to your audience is quite important. You need to be able to fine tune that to achieve the best result. So our solution is a white box solution. You know, you can work with us. You can hire data scientists on the market to actually fine tune that and keep adjust that. It's all about iterations. You're never going to get it right the first time. But it, this gives you the ability to, to fine tune, to adapt into your own business scenarios. Um, another thing is called smart store. This is quite relevant because um, I've said up before, 80% of retail still happen offline, and it looks like it's going to offline and in store are going to continue to be the major channel of retail. Uh, so uh, how do we capture? How do we improve the experience in store, and how do we capture customers' data and behavior in store is critical at the moment. Um, I'll move on to this. So in store analysis. This is all powered by machine vision. When I say machine vision, is about analyzing the data or the behavior that we capture in the video. Okay, so that includes the basic facial recognition, uh, which if you are able to capture people's face and if they give you the authority, that's the best way to identify someone. But apart from that, we can use um, AI and big data to analyze uh, people's behavior in store. You know how they navigate through your store. Who's doing what? One of the most compelling use cases for this in-store analysis is actually anti-theft. Um, so according to uh, research, that 3% of the uh, retail revenue actually was uh, lost. It's lost due to a theft in Australia, the 3%. That's actually quite significant. Um, you know, if you're talking about retailer who's turning through you know, a few hundred millions or even billion dollar worth of revenue every year, that translates to you know, a few million or, or, or tens of millions of dollars. Um, using facial recognition combined with what we call person re-identification technology allow you to capture people 
uh, who is uh, you know who is stealing from your shop, who is doing stuff that's not they're, supposed, they're not supposed to do in your shop, and that could reduce a huge percentage of your store loss. Another thing we're talking about is store traffic analysis, right? A lot of uh, a retailer, especially department stores or shopping centers, they're in the real estate business, really. You know, who they bring to their store and where they're going to place the product determine sometimes really you know change the way or uh, drive their business or change their business. So being able to understand how your customer navigates through your store, you know, where they actually stop, um, and we can further break down into demographic stuff like that. It, it will help you to place the right product at the right spot and offer better services as well. Um, powering through that is the uh, custom profiling. Again, it goes back to uh, what we said before about knowing your customer. Once you have the data middle layer, you're able to uh, basically run some pretty uh, you know, uh, sophisticated analysis across your customer's uh, uh, landscape. You'll be able to segment them. You'll be able to uh, do some real-time targeting and, uh, and, and engagement uh, based on their preference based on recent behavior, based on you know, how they transact with you. If you have a partnership alliances with other retailers, you can enrich their customer profile, and you can actually you know, uh, start targeting them in a, in, a, in a better way, in a more smart way. Um, that's another thing around supply chain. So um, you know, high value goods trafficking, so uh, tracking, sorry. Um, this is more about uh, some of the retailers, especially if you're in a luxury goods or if you're a department store, some of the items are high value. So when you are uh, getting that from your supply chain or getting that from your, uh, I guess, your suppliers at that time, uh, be able to track where they are on a national level is quite important. That, that reduce duplication, that reduce, um, you know, misshipment, stuff like that, cross shipment as well. So this is actually quite important. So we offer that as well, um, um, and obviously it needs to be integrated with uh, with your suppliers system as well. And uh, this is about operation optimization. Um, there's a lot of things going on, but I want to talk about one thing, which is sales forecast. Uh, this is quite important because for a lot of retailers, margins are very thin, especially for big box store and department, uh, not department store, uh, uh, supermarkets. They're running on very thin margin. So, um, you know, understocking is not a great thing. You missed on, on sales opportunity. You have missed revenue. But overstocking, um, is also pretty bad because then you have things left on your shelf, especially if it's a perishable product. Uh, this will cause a lot of uh, damage to your to your bottom line. So um, being able to look at the data you already have, which is across uh, on a national level and on a store level about who's buying what product in what season, allow you to better forecast um, uh, your sales. You know what can be sold and what stock I need to uh, a product I need to stock at which store. So this will bring huge efficiency. And uh, um, an example is our Double Eleven Shopping Festival. So we are able to forecast what product are normally sold in what region. So we can place the right product at the right warehouse that close to the customer uh, when the sale happens. So the first items was actually uh, in last year's Double Eleven was actually shaped, uh, shipped eight minutes um, after the customer actually received uh, the product eight minutes after the um, uh, after the uh, the shopping festival started means there is the item they want actually placed very close to their uh, to the warehouse that nearby them uh, all right look at the uh, the retail uh, dashboard this is a data visualization this operates this works with uh, um, a large retail chains who operates many stores you know, who wanted to have a holistic view about how customer and uh, is engaging with your store and the services and uh, and also what product is selling as well. So this gives you a holistic view. This helps you to drive critical business decision um, from a high level. Now, I want to share a few case study. Um, there's many uh, logos here, but I want to pick a couple of the most important ones. Uh, one is our Herma supermarket. Um, I think you've probably seen them um, on, uh, on news. Uh, it's been quite popular. In the last uh, three years, has grown uh, pretty fast, you know. Uh, uh, so, what's unique about Herma? Um, I encourage you to do some YouTube search to to see the the full scale and the the, the, the variety of services it offers. But I want to emphasize on one thing, which is what set Herma apart from a lot of other stores, is that they actually use each store as a distribution center. So. Um, um, if you live within three kilometers of uh, any Herma store, the Herma will guarantee you 30 minutes delivery. So this is really a great example of online offline integration. You can always go to the store to pick the, the fresh product that you want. Um, but if you're a member, if you live within three kilometers, 
uh, we can always fulfill that uh, uh, within 30 minutes. So that really brings the convenience of, uh, you know, of people uh, and uh, encourage them to buy online because they don't have to wait for the next day. It almost come immediately. Um, next one I want to share is the in-time uh, retail sort of a transformation. Um, so in-time is, um, uh, you know, it's like uh, Cheston or a lot of the shopping centers in, in Melbourne or in Australia. It's a, it was a traditional uh, shopping center operator. Uh, but after we acquired them, uh, we realized that, you know, just opening a shopping center is not going to be enough. They are going through this transformation. They want to deal with customers directly. They want to engage them um, and directly, and they want to sell product and, uh, services and product directly with your customers by knowing them better, by offering them more services. Um, so one of the things we've done is, number one, help them to collect more customer data, and number two, enable the retailers within the shopping centers to sell directly through um, in times uh, e-commerce platform, and thus improve their customer experience. And what we've done is that we have created a, uh, a, a uh, online to offline, which is an offering, which is the uh, an app, a mobile app uh, that enables customer to uh, not only shop online but to engage with whatever the um, the shopping center offers uh, uh, better. So that includes, you know, things like um, your your uh, your coupon activity. You can redeem coupons in store. You get your coupons in your, on your mobile phone directly. You can you can redeem them um, in the shopping center. Um, let me show you a few things. Uh, so this is a screenshot of the uh, the um, uh, the in times uh, uh, mobile app. So as you can see, uh, the few things they're offering, number one is a parking service. When you go into a, a shopping center, uh, I guess you often found, especially in the weekends, you can't find a car park space. With this app integrated with IoT device in the car park, you be before you even drive in, you can see where is the empty parking spot. They help you to navigate, uh, and you can also secure certain parking spots uh, on your mobile phone. Uh, obviously, by paying, so um, you know it, it also you know, bring convenience to the to the customer as well. Um, In-store navigation is a given. Uh, you can buy movie tickets, and the important thing is that you can get you know uh, electronic receipts. So you don't have to always carry receipt. Uh, you, you, once you purchase from any of their stores within entire shopping mall, if you're a member, you're getting the electric, uh, electronic receipts straight away. And during lunchtime um, in a shopping mall, there are uh, many restaurants and the food court and stuff like that. So uh, instead of the queuing up to get your lunch, uh, what you can do is you can uh, actually virtually queue up through your app. And then you can go continue shopping, doing other things. Once it comes to you, then you can go to the shop, uh, the, the restaurant that you were sort of pre-booked uh, or pre-queue sort of up virtually online. And also they offer a premium customer service as well for 20 cents a day, equivalent to 20 cents a day. You get more service. You get gift wrapping, you get free drinks. Um, you get discount and you get a lot of a free rental, you know, uh, umbrella, wheelchairs, and prams, stuff like that, battery pack as well. So this really entices customers to spend with you and to also to contribute uh, uh, and sort of give their digital behavior um, to you as well. So the more you collect and the more you know about customer, the better offering you can provide. Um, so this is another uh, few screenshots about the community they create as well. So apart from only services, and product, they also uh, uh, create a, a, a sort of like a, a community. You know, uh, there are a, a social hubs uh, where you can show uh, like the you know a great time you have in the shopping center, and also you can get messages from store manager directly. Um, you know, if you're a butcher in a shopping center that you sell fresh product, in the end of the day, you can uh, post messages in through this channel to say, and you know, things are on sale, clearance. Um, so to help customer to, to attract more customers to your store to uh, take home uh, your, your offering as well. And also there's a customer service and a compliance sort of a page where it helps you uh, to uh, shopping center to directly engage with the customer about you know, services that they can improve and problems they, that they need to be uh, uh, aware of. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that what's really changing is that the role of the store is that it's, it's not going away. It just is changing, you know. It's it's not about selling stuff to your customer anymore. It's a, it's about experience. It's in a social hub. Uh, it's about education and entertainment. And you can always buy product online or offline. But offline, what's unique about offline is the is the human interaction and the one on one on one experience that you can bring. So I wanted to uh, wrap up this uh, 
this webinar with a quote from our CEO, uh, which is, um, you know, it's not about online versus offline. It's about the old versus the new. You know, those who cling on the old ways of retailing will be disrupted. So brick and mortar are still relevant. You know, we can, as long you know, as we can integrate technologies together, um, we can create more value for our customer. So that wraps up my uh, presentation today. Thank you. Great, thank you, James. Uh, appreciate you giving us that great insight, some, some fantastic knowledge about uh, new retail and how it's, uh, how it's shaping uh, around the region. Uh, we do have some questions, I'm, I'm pleased to say, so um, I'll just ask these if I can. Yep. Um, so the first one is focused on a, a large retailer. So they're um, a large retailer uh, processing hundreds of video streams. Mm. Um, with your in-store video analytics solution, how do you solve the compute and bandwidth issue? That's a really good question. So. Uh, it's a really good question. So, so normally these days we would uh, we work with large retailers. They all have IP cameras, which is full HD, and uh, the video streams are huge. Mm. Um, not only in Australia, even in China, we can't really stream back hundreds of cameras into our data center to process. Um, so we use two things. One is to do uh, a certain feature of extraction and processing at the edge. So that include uh, you know having uh, age compute capability uh, to filter out as much uh, stuff as possible. So we only send the bits that need to be processed back to the data center. Okay. So I would say if you have to use one line for the answer is to use age compute to do as much processing as possible. Um, that is expensive and it's hard to maintain, especially if you have hundreds of stores, you need hundreds of age compute. Uh, that's true, but at the current environment where bandwidth is not there yet. Maybe when 5G comes, it could be a different issue. But at the moment, um, if you want to implement this, you need to have edge compute at each store to, uh, to process your video. OK, great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we've also had a, a few people asking questions about image search. I know you touched on that in some of your content uh, today. But a few people have asked, um, what's the key difference between your image search solution and many others uh, that are out there on the market? Mm, that's, uh, that's also a good question. So I, uh, I noticed that there's a lot of image search solutions sort of on the market. Uh, some are from our competitors <laughs> as well. Uh, what's unique about us, I would say, um, uh, really is around the data that we have. Um, I don't think, I think we, we have smart people, our competitor has smart people as well. Uh, we can all build pretty fantastic algorithm. But as you know, image search is part of the AI solution. Uh, with AI, uh, what's going to determine the accuracy is mostly about what data you can access. Mm. Um, so um, we, our image search are really uh, built and optimized in a retail scenario. The reason why is being that we're a retailer or, or marketplace ourselves. We have a billion product. Um, so we use, we're constantly using this product to train our engine to make it more accurate. So in a retail scenario, um, I think our accuracy and the ability for us to continuously improve this service uh, is unmatched because there's no other retailer bigger than us. Okay, yeah. thanks for that answer. You talked a lot about data there, so I think the next question is, a, is referring a little bit to that. Um, but the, the question is, we don't currently have a lot of customer data. Where do we start if we want to digitalize our business? Mm. Um, yeah, that's, that's actually quite a common, common issue with uh, retailer we've seen here. Um, uh, most of them still operating store. I, I would say two things. W number one is to uh, uh, obviously have a uh, loyalty program if you don't have that already, because a loyalty program is what's going to help you to capture easily capture uh, most of your offline transaction. You know, the the best loyalty program in Australia arguably is Flyby. I think a lot of people are aware of that. When you whenever you go to Coles or any of the Flyby affiliate, you're always trying to scan that to get some points. And that's when they capture your offline data and your shopping behavior and what you buy. So, um, you know, if you're an offline retailer, uh, then having a loyalty program is very valuable for you to capture those data. But then, if it's not, that's not enough, then we move on to something that's more advanced. That could be your video analytics to see what they're purchasing and how they navigating through your store. But that's more granular. But I think the first thing you've got to do is to have a loyalty program um, to capture data. Okay, so basically what you're saying, start simple and then kind of expand from there and add, add bits on as you, as you need to. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. Okay, uh, the next one's really about the difference between Australia and China. So it's, uh, they're saying Ch China is the leading, oh, sorry, China is leading the retail transformation. What can we borrow and learn that we could apply in Australia? Mm, um, 
first of all, it's a very different market, I have to say. Uh, in China and Australia are very, very different. Um, but uh, I don't think copying exactly the type of strategy from China to Australia would work because the landscape is very different. The, the, the way people purchase is very different as well. Uh, but I think certain technology can be borrowed uh, because that's what's essentially empowered the transformation in China. I think number one is being able to have better payment options. So in Australia at the moment, payments are mostly uh, being dominated by credit card companies, which is your Visa MasterCard. And uh, uh, very unlikely you're going to get data from uh, Visa MasterCard in terms of what and, you know, your offline purchasing behavior. So mm. having a, uh, a, a, a digital wallet or some sort of a, a program allow you to capture customers' in-store transaction uh, would be very valuable. Uh, you know, perhaps building a digital wallet yourself, a press partner with uh, other uh, customers to build a digital wallet uh, and to share those data. And the point is not on the wallet, but the point is to be able to capture those data. So that's, um, I think that's one thing that you can borrow from China. Uh, if you look at China, uh, most of the transformation comes from because, you know, Alipay, which is uh, our financial service uh, sort of a business unit within Alibaba, Alipay really helps to transform China to become a cashless society these days. Um, everything that people are purchasing, uh, services they buy, goods they buy, are using Alipay. This is how we capture this data that sort of enable us to do better offering as well. Um, so having a way to capture customers offline data, which is, uh, you know, transaction is probably the pinpoint now. Having a digital wallet or some sort of a, a payment wallet that you can use. Um, would it be the key thing to, uh, to, 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 to learn from China? That's one thing. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks, James. I'm just checking the, um, the live feed here for any others. I can see there's one, one more question here. Uh, we're a mid-sized retailer and wanted to take the first step to rebuild our e-commerce website. Do you have an e-commerce platform? Mm, yeah, we do. Actually, I haven't really um, uh, touched on that. We actually have a um, uh, pretty comprehensive um, SaaS offering uh, for e-commerce platform. It's not only e-commerce; it's actually a marketplace. So you can have multi vendors uh, uh, enabled in this uh, in this marketplace, and it has loyalty system, uh, uh, sort of a, a promotional system, logistic all building into it. Um, so the short answer is yes, we have such offering. And um, you know, if you're looking to upgrade your current e-commerce system or wanted to uh, integrate a certain component, uh, feel free to talk to us. Yes, we do. All right, thank you.